Hey guys, Sakit here, and I wanted to do a slightly different video. I wanted to do a breakdown of the utility and unique flasks currently in the game. Since I was looking at the flask setups, I wanted to use my Slayer, and I thought, why not do this live? Um, I'll give my input on the flasks that I think are good, need some work, could be improvement, maybe potential new utility flasks. My thought process on uniques, again, which ones I think need changing, adding, etc, etc. So... Kind of basic, but someone might find this interesting. Kind of just have my input on things. I'm just going to move my cam along a bit, a little bit, so that we don't have our text. And let's go. So right off the bat, Quicksilver. I don't really talk that much about it. It's good. It gives you movement speed. It has good usage. Has good duration. Pog champ. Bismuth flask. I get why they made it. I'm sure one person who used it while leveling, I'm sure there's probably one person who's used it in some really gimmicky Pathfinder with the new unique items which give you increased damage and defense based on your resists, but pretty underwhelming. Um, I would like if they had, that it gave like plus one max all res, even with Pathfinder crazy flask effectiveness pushing up to be 2%, it probably still wouldn't see use, but that would at least make it slightly more interesting as is. Unless they make an interesting, unique bismuth, I don't think it's ever going to see much use. Stibnite, grossly underrated. And GGG clearly agrees because they keep making overpowered as all hell unique Stibnite flasks. And I kind of wish they would stop doing that. Creating a smoke cloud on use is amazing. It's a blind. Blind is a good mechanic. It means you take a, few, a lot less hits. It also gives you... 100% increased evasion rating during effect. This is very powerful. And then it also has insane usage with a really high duration. Basically, you can spam it non-stop. It's a very good way to make sure that you're never affected by bleeds or curses. For a utility flask with such a high uptime and such a high usage, this is a very good place to put in mods that are important for you. So, for example, if you're a Dream Feather build, you can run a Sib Knight, which already boosts your evasion, and then you could have more increased evasion on it, and you'll always have insane uptime of it just because of the very nature of the flask. 10 out of 10. Amethyst Flask. As a base flask, Amethyst is basically useless because if you ever wanted an Amethyst Flask, you just run it Series Promise. It costs like 2 Chaos. Meh. Um, I kind of dislike the Amethyst Flask just because of that. The base flask is basically useless because of the unique. Not a massive fan of that. I feel like it could use some love. Um, and by that I mean love which only makes Amethyst Flask better, not the Azeria's Promise. Ruby Flask. Obviously it's good. This will go for the Ruby, the Sapphire, and the Topaz. One thing which I like about both the Topaz and the Ruby, and to some extent the Sapphire, is, well, for all three, there is a reason to use these over their unique counterparts. There are a particular build which want very high resistive insert element here. And these give the, you know, plus to maximum fire res. If you run an alchemist ruby flask, or sapphire, etc. The increased effect makes this max res even higher. You then slap it into a pathfinder with all the crazy nodes on the tree. And you end up with ridiculous levels of elemental mitigation. Making in some cases these better than the unique variants. That being said, however, the unique variance of all three of these flasks is ridiculously, ridiculously overpowered. They do come with a price point. Dying Sun obviously have, has the largest price point. Um, then you have Taste of Hate, then at the bottom you have the Vessel. But even so, I like the fact that there is some use to using these base flasks over the unique variant. They all have very good usage. Silver Flask. Silver Flask is a weird one for me. I both dislike this flask in the fact that it exists and I also don't like the way it's designed so right off the bat onslaught 20% attack cast movement speed very very powerful before the only way you could get onslaught was through the tree on on kill effects or through some particularly unique items then making the well and then obviously ascendancy when they added ascendancy the creation of the silver flask instantly devalued the ascendancy options which gave onslaught the uniques which offered onslaught and the skill points which gave onslaught so that already, I dislike when a flask, and how accessible flasks are, because every build uses them, makes other options less interesting. That's a bad thing. And then just from a base value, it has a good duration, very bad usage, in fact you're limited to one use unless you roll it, and Onslaught 
is just a buff. So this will not scale with flask effectiveness, meaning for a lot of builds which get flask effectiveness, this feels a lot weaker. As such, I really dislike running silver flasks in basically any build. Builds where I want onslaught, I pick an ascendancy where I can get onslaught from that. So yeah, it's a good flask. I just really don't like it in its current form. And I hope to God they never, never, never make a unique silver flask. That being said, GGG is GGG, so they probably will make a silver flask, which is you have poison during flask effectiveness. Anyway, Acmarine flask. Never seen one used, and I've tried to come up with reasons for people to use an Acmarine flask. Maybe weird hypothermia things. Making ch chilled ground on use is interesting. It has very good duration. It has interesting usage distribution. Odd that it's 15 and 40. You know, you get two and a bit uses, lowish count. Maybe if they gave it the Stibnite treatment of 10 and 30, it still wouldn't see any use. And this would be the kind of flask which I would like to see Uniques designed around. So I've often been of the opinion that, you know, cold is a underpowered skill because most times when you use it, you're converting it to other things. I would really like them to make a cold caster themed Acmarine flask which encouraged you to keep your cold damage as cold. You drop the chilled ground, have some synergy with stuff to do when sitting chilled ground or whatever. Yeah. Bad flask, but very good potential for unique flask. And then if it's a very powerful for unique effect, it then has the downside of using a weaker base flask with it. So in that sense, I like it from a design perspective as a base flask point of view, terrible. Also, if you want chilled ground, you can very easily do a castle and damage taken vortex or arctic breath setup. But dunk. Granite flask. Granite flask is good. Uh, nearly any time I would want a granite flask, I'd rather have a basalt flask cover. If you have the case to run both, brilliant. But most of the time, granite flask to me and the kinds of builds that I play, I often play right side of the street acro based. I would nearly always just go for a basalt. That being said, granite is good. The unique variants kind of work. It's fine. Uh, much of the same with the Jade Flask. I feel like Jade Flask is just outclassed by Stibnite, unless you're doing particular things where you need the flat evasion rating. If you're Dream Feather, if you're doing stuff where that evasion rating turns into movement speed through Queen of the Forest, if you're using Uniques, Jade Flask feels good. You can use Jade Flask just in any acro build, but often you're quite limited on flask slots. You generally want one, some people like two life. Then you want a Quicksilver, especially if you're a bow build, because you won't be using Whirling Blades or whatever, so you're already at three. Then you want, like, some kind of defensive flask. Basalt's better defense than a Jade, so that's four. And then it's like, insert unique flask. How do I fit in the Jade? So, I like it in the fact that it has very good synergy with some particularly unique items. When it comes to designing a unique version of a Jade flask, which I think would see use... I've been saying for a while, I kind of like the idea of seeing more hybrid um, life utility flasks. So you have a life flask, so a healing flask, which is also a utility flask. And this would be a good way of encouraging life build diversity without just... Basically, the way that Path of Exile tends to work is life, CI, life, CI. They're never in sync. One is amazing, one is terrible, one is amazing, one is terrible. The main issue we've had with CI is CI has been the amazing one. Life has been down here. And this pendulum, it hasn't moved. And new things keep being added to the game. And it keeps getting cheaper and cheaper and cheaper and cheaper to make good CI gear. Making it more available earlier in the league. So this, you know, pendulum is very out of whack. If they introduced, you know, more life utility flask, which were only good for life builds and not good for CI builds, be this a new base flask type or uniques. Which is just, I think it's kind of cool. Quartz flask. Quartz flask is another interesting one in the fact that it's a very powerful effect. Phasing is amazing. 10% dodge is amazing. 10% spell dodge is amazing. Especially in a post-nerf roomy world. Um, nerfed roomy is... 20% block and then if you get max roll 10% Yeah, I think it's 10% spell block compare that to a quartz flask, which isn't unique. It's really cheap You can get them for less than an elk They drop just commonly and it also gives you phasing. This is technically more powerful than a roomies 
technically. Obviously, it doesn't give as much because it's 10 and 10 rather than 20 and 10. But it's really undervalued. You could ask, argue that Rumors also does give you the armor, which is true. But phasing is very powerful. I think the Quartz is a very undervalued flask. And it only ever really sees use in builds which, you know, are doing stuff with Raider. And they're using the phasing as just a way to reliably keep phasing up. I really like Quartz Flask. And I would like the unique version of the Forbidden Taste, which we'll talk about later when we talk about lists of uniques. Boom. I just hope they don't ever make a power Quartz Flask. The problem is, is Quartz Flask is already a very powerful base, and as I've mentioned previously, the powerful bases, which are slightly underrepresented, I don't want them getting super powerful uniques. I want the super powerful uniques going onto the bad bases rather than the OPOP bases. Sulfur Flask, again, another underrepresented flask. Very powerful for any kind of double dipping build. If you're an Ignite build or a Poison build, Sulfur Flask reads as 80% poison damage. Gives you some regen, has very good usage. In fact, you get three uses out of it. Very underrepresented. I really hope they never make a OPOP damage sulfur flask. We're not talking about, you know, the Zealots Oath one. We're talking about like pure DPS sulfur flasks. Do not do it. Do not do it. If you were going to do it, maybe having an interesting one where instead of creating a consecrated ground, it made a degen ground. So it would maybe see some use with, you know, very heavy theming of, you know, you're cycloning through mobs, you press it, drops a degen, which burns enemies, could also maybe burn you, I don't know, but that would be an interesting way of doing it. But for now, I hope they kind of just leave this base alone, because it's already very powerful, just underutilized. Basalt. Basalt is my favorite base in the game. This is the kind of flask which makes sense to have this 5 second, 40 and 60. This is why I like this, and I don't like Silver Flask. Silver Flask, so Onslaught is something you always want active because you always want to move faster. Even if you're not killing things, you want to move faster. So it feels kind of awkward, in fact, that you kind of want to use it moving in between packs, but you also want active during packs. Whereas a Basalt is a kind of a five second window. You can keep it as is with only one charge, roll it with Alchemist, and it gives you crazy Fizz mitigation because you get even higher than 20%. Or you can use it with reduced charges. Sorry, tracking items. You can roll it with reduced charges to get two charges if you're a kind of person who likes to always have two uses on all of their flasks. Very powerful. Never make a unique basalt flask. I don't care if it's like a troll item. Never, never make a unique version. Please. Like, don't. I don't want to see taste of basalt flask where it's 20% of fizz damage reduction during flask effectiveness gains 70% dodge and all incoming elemental damage is converted into chaos orbs and they just drop on the floor. Don't do actually do that but only give me one. Um but don't don't do that. No. See so, yeah. Let's talk about unique flask now. Blood of the Karui, aka that flask that no one knows exists because you just never see it being used anywhere and it's also kind of rare in the fact that you don't see many of them just randomly dropping um it heals you no life applies during flask effects recover full life at the end of flask effects it's gimmicky you can do stuff with it but not really worth talking about uh doedries doedries is actually pretty powerful you can use it as a way to proc cast when damage taken setups it often sees a lot of use in like drink when damage taken builds it's also just kind of nice as a way to keep your charges running um powerful has good usage i like it um this is just one of those again sort of gimmick flasks something you use and kill yourself by forgetting to use very well designed kind of wished it was more available it's also very nice it's just a good leveling flask it is tied to a specific league uh, i want to say horrendous if i remember correctly making it quite hard to get hold of i kind of wish this was just in the common loot table really nice leveling flask and is build defining in some cases I'm not even going to attempt levangas levangis spirit again bit of an odd one you can use it this is a flask which hasn't aged very well. So the skills have no mana cost during flask effects. In the old meta of PoE, and when I say old, I'm talking about old, old PoE, um, like pre-Act 4, 
sustaining mana cost was very different. Leech was in an entirely different state back then. The way the game worked was in a different state. Eldritch Battery, all this other things. So it wasn't that uncommon that you would be seeing people using items which gave them free skills. It would be very common for people to be running Blood Magic in most of their setups. So having something like this, you know, it kind of, it was difficult to build around, but it worked. In the current game, it's very hard to justify this fast existence, which is a shame, and you will get items like this, which kind of falls to the wayside, and maybe someone will post a build on Reddit which uses it, but I honestly have not seen this fast scene use in a lot of patches. Feels bad, man. Kind of a similar thing with Divination Distillate. It's one of those cases of this used to be the go-to super expensive flask, which every build used when they're, you know, farming Dominus. People used to farm Dominus. Um... Every now and again, I'll have someone buy one off me for like a couple of chaos, and I'll be like, wow, you actually bought that? What build are you doing? I'm like, oh, just some totem or wind ripper thing. Kind of wish that rarity quantity would see more use than it currently does. People still do it, you can still do it, but that meta's kind of fallen to the wayside in terms of just go quick, clear speed, OP, OP. Writhing Jar, GGG's worst design decision to date. They hate this flask every time something comes out cool with this flask we go shit we've, they've made another cool build with the cool flask what do we do kill the build kill it kill it now powerful gimmicky not really much more to say it has its usage but overall a bit of a mer one sin's rebirth so sin's rebirth was a flask they made and i don't know why they made it and i have a lot of issues with this flask so this came in with 2.5 it has the onslaught problem of a silver flask but it's bugged so what that means is gain unholy might during flask effect. Now, flasks which give a gain X is fine because they don't scale with flask effectiveness. You get all the CI builds, they get the witch flask effectiveness cluster. All the pathfinder builds obviously get all the, you know, flask effectiveness clusters. This sh should not scale with flask effectiveness, but for some reason it currently does. They haven't hotfixed it yet as far as I'm aware. This is bugged. It's stupidly powerful. And Holy Might, again, it was something which was very difficult to get. You could only get it from particular items. This flask existing makes other items less interesting. And they put it on an incredibly powerful flask with an amazing uptime. I do not understand why this exists. And they also gave it Ignite. Why, why is that on there? It didn't need to be on there. People would run the flask without it. But for some reason, you also get the benefit of being Ignite immune. Ignite isn't a particularly scary status element. But it's still nice being immune to Ignites. I guess they didn't want, you know, Righteous Fire builds to abuse this. Because that would be the real issue. Those Fizz to Chaos conversion Righteous Fire. Yeah. Please less of these, GGG. Coruscating Elixir, again, not too much to say about it. It's a Ruby Flask, that's not what's important. The main thing is you can do interesting minion things with it. Every now and again you see a Detonate minion build. It has its use, but that's sort of that. Taste of Hate, Taste of Hate is funny. So Taste of Hate is a flask which when it first got made, everyone's like, well, what the hell is this? And you kind of look at it now, and it doesn't seem that OP just because of the other things which exist. It's obviously still a very overpowered flask. It's still very expensive. It always has at least 150 chaos uh, price point in hardcore. I currently want one for my main build. One thing I will say about Taste of Hate, which is kind of interesting, um, people often run a Taste of Hate instead of a Basalt Flask. If you use both, physical is a complete and utter joke, and it's like, what is physical damage? I would eventually plan to use both in the current build that I am playing. However, one thing to comment on that is physical is much much less of an issue these days. Most scary elemental stuff is, surprise, surprise, elemental. Most one-shots come out of things which are hybrid fizz and X. So the pure physical mitigation fasts do become weaker. Very powerful, very good uptime. It's an issue. I feel like no flask should ever be more powerful than Taste of Fate. I feel like Taste of Fate in its current version is still too powerful. The fact it gives amazing defense and offense is awkward. At least, however, it's only amazing offense in physical builds, and not all physical builds want the cold damage. Some physical builds want don't want to shatter. So at least there is some limitation to Taste of Hate, but not really. This is actually an interesting flask, and this is something that I quite like. 
So this is an example of a very powerful flask, which is amazing, very expensive because it is so amazing, but it requires skill to use. So it has a very short duration of 2.5 seconds. It has a base use of one. So unless you're using reduced flask effectiveness um, on a belt or something, you're kind of screwed. You have to have the one use of it. It gives you immunity to freeze, chill, curse, and stun. And onslaught. So it's like super powerful. It's kind of one of those things of if you're a CI build, you might run one, maybe even two, if you don't want to run a Chula or the Ring Verantis, or whatever it's called. Um, very powerful, but I like it. It's one of those things of you can't just slap it on like a Taste of Hate or a Sin's Rebirth and just always have it active and just face around everything. You need to think about when you're using it. And because it has the reduced duration in that, you're not so much using it for the base onslaught effect, you're using it purely for the unique effect of it. So the fact that it's on an onslaught flask is kind of irrelevant. This is the kind of unique that I like. Incredibly powerful, but it requires proper usage. Good. Forbidden Taste, underrated. I've been using this flask in my Space Fire build. Um, very, very powerful, and it goes into what I was talking about, where you have hybrid life and utility. Now, obviously, this whole degen thing means it has serious limitations. You need to be built around it. You need to be on a build which has high enough life to justify having a percentage heal over just a flat heal. If you're using just a 4 5k HP build, then running just a standard seething flask will be good enough. If, however, you're on like a 7, 8k build, like I was with my Space Fire, when I have 8k life and I press my seething and it's like, whoa, 2k heal with all your flask effectiveness, it's like, that doesn't do very much. However, when you have 8k HP, a random Devara pops you on the head for 7k, you press this and you're back to full, that feels really powerful. It also gives you the phasing, it gives you the dodge during flask effectiveness. It has this kind of backward synergy where you don't want increased flask duration to get, make the most of the implicit because the longer the duration is, the longer this DJ is. A really nice flask which more builds should use if they have the availability to get Chaos Resistance on gear. Very well designed. I really like it. However, I do wish it had two usage. This is the kind of flask which has enough limitation in it that I feel like it could get away with having two uses and giving it two uses would make this flask so much better and I don't think people would complain if it required two uses I don't think people would complain because it has such a high limitation you must have good regen you cannot use it in vulnerability maps you cannot use it in no regen maps and you have to have enough chaos resistance even on my explosive arrow character I didn't want to use this flask in vulnerability maps so you're in a position of, do I re-roll vulnerability maps? Do I swap to a different flask setup? But if I swap to a different flask setup, I've already invested so heavily into my gear for the Chaos Res. Please, GGG, make this a two-use flask. I think this would be a very nice, subtle, sideways push to give some life builds. This won't fix life. This will give some life builds a little bit of extra jazz. It's cool. I like it a lot. Lion's Roar. Lion's Roar is another one I actually kind of like. It's a very good power flask. But it has this inbuilt defense, which is also, in a way, a limiting factor. And it comes on a weak base. I know granite flasks are very powerful in the right cases. But on evasion builds, you know, if you're an acro build, 3,000 flat armor isn't that powerful. If you're an armor stacking build, sorry, Rulichi knows all of a sudden. If you're an armor stacking build, it's good. But in most cases, you would want a granite with increased armor effect on it. So, mm-hmm. Also, this competes with stuff like Rumi's. It often feels bad using two of the same base flask. It does have good usage. It does have good uptime. Sometimes the knockback is good defensively. Sometimes the knockback is a frustration as it pushes stuff out of your range. Very powerful. Gives a lot of damage. Relatively cheap. It's usually about 30 to 40 chaos in hardcore. It's affordable. This is the kind of flask that I like. It's a powerful flask which you can afford. It's not a powerful flask which you've got to save up your whole character to then buy this like 500 chaos flask and then everything is a joke and use it in every build this is a limited flask with power and a cost which is reasonable to the average player good overflowing chalice terrible flask i tried using it in a couple of builds it's just bad it has very good uptime the gain no charges it's just awkward 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 i've tried using it it's just no bad flask Sword of Divine, again, very powerful, very good usage, gives Zealot's Oath. It is just powerful in CI builds, has its use. Pogchamp. Rotgut, an odd flask. So it's a Quicksilver. 
it has good base duration, 30 to 40 charges to use, 50 base cap. You get 50% chance to gain a flash charge when you deal a crit, so that's like an inbuilt surgeon mod, which is nice. Gain onslaught for one second per frenzy charge on use, consume frenzy charges on use. So this was like pre-silver flask, never seeing use, maybe one or two people would use it, and it was kind of gimmicky. I have a friend who plays gimmicky builds, and he has a hard time fitting this into builds. It's the kind of item, I know GGG doesn't really go back to retroactively change old items because of the current state of the game. This is a flask which you could, at the very least, m remove the like silly uses on it. Um, I think a lot of these like old flasks, which will probably never see any use, if you just make them at least have two uses instead of one, it'd be slightly better. I don't think anyone would complain about this. It wouldn't become particularly matter if they made it two use flask. Whatever. At least it looks pretty. At least it looks pretty. Witch fiber again, very powerful. Um, very powerful base. It's a two use. I like how this were like, this is too good to be three use Stib Knight, but since Rebirth, that was fine at three uses. Doesn't make much sense to me. I'm very interested in the way they balance the flask, especially with the flask usage, because it seems completely out of whack. Um, like this, they said, this is too powerful. You can only have one use of it because that's just too good. Whereas this like, will give you two uses on the Witch Fiber. It has the inbuilt increased duration, which it really didn't need. And it gives you vulnerability. Like, it could just give you the vulnerability and people would use it. But then it also gives you 50 to 70% increased damage over time. At least it's only damage over time. It's not stuff which double dips. But yeah, powerful. At least it's affordable. Again, it kind of comes at a similar price point of about 30 to 40 chaos and hardcore usually. I like it. Slightly OP in my opinion. But it's not completely ridiculous. So yeah. It's Zero's Promise, one of the most overpowered flasks in the game, and it costs at least one or two chaos. In a way, I actually kind of like it, Zero's. It's so ridiculously powerful, but so affordable that everyone can have one. And the base flask, while it's nice having the chaos resistance, and I value chaos resistance more than most players, so I actually like having the base flask. Most people would choose not to have the base flask, and in CI builds, it's weak because they don't need the chaos res. Very powerful, but affordable, so I like it. But it's like completely and utterly ridiculous AP. It's just, it's just stupid. It gives you leech and a bunch of chaos damage. It's amazing in like every build. Really, really good. Dying some. Okay. So. 27 to 33 charges, which basically means fuck you for divines. You can get, like, so, it has a base use of 60, and it rolls 27 to 33, meaning they couldn't decide, or they thought that, like, I don't know. Overpowered is all fuck. I will never have one because I will never justify dropping like four or five hundred chaos because people don't really run. Well, people do farm shaper and hardcore, but not really. And they're just so fucking rare that I will just never have one. It gives you 30% increased error of effect. That would be good enough that most builds would use it. So if you additional projectiles, make it good enough that most builds would use it. Builds which are both AOE and projectile love this flask. This flask just like doubles the effectiveness of stuff like Barrage and Tornado Shot and like a bunch of random spells. It's stupid. I don't know what the fuck they were thinking. Rumi's. I don't think it needed nerfing. I don't think people were really complaining about block. I feel like the nerfed version, as I said, it, like you compare this to a Quartz flask now and it really isn't that great. Um... I feel bad about the nerf. I feel like it could have gone back to its old state. Again, I find it so strange that they thought roomies is an issue. So that's nerf roomies. And then in the same patch they nerfed roomies, they added in stuff like Sin's Rebirth. Doesn't make sense to me. I don't know why they did it. It's a good flask. It's still usable post nerf. So I guess you could argue whether you're still going to use it post nerf. It was too powerful before. But that's just really a case of block and where block is in the meta. 
I feel like this should go back to where it is, but you know, otherwise it's a perfectly good flask. Perfectly good flask. Vessel of Vincta. Vessel is another weird flask in the fact that it is completely utterly overpowered in the fact that it just gives you stupidly good things, which are just stupidly good, but it feels terrible to use. Um, they made it a one use only thing, so you can only use it once. It makes Pathfinder feel good when you get to use it for free because you're expecting the thing. It has a very serious drawback in the self shock. You can mitigate that quite easily. It's completely ridiculously overpowered, but it just feels bad. Um, you feel like a god when it's active, and that's cool. Feeling like a god, and you have the nice little animation. You can play builds which keep it up all of the time. You know, play my Flick Strike Pathfinder could perm a Vessel Vinkta. That character felt like a god. It was Flick Strike. It had Vessel up all the time. Really cool. But, yeah. I don't know really what to do about this flask. I would like to see it have better usage. And they got the effect, like, really hard. But... Whenever Val Pact exists and Vestal exists, there's going to be an issue. People like circle jerk for hours about, well, which flask is, which is the issue? Is it Val Pact is the issue? Is CI the issue? Is Vessel the issue? Is Pathfinder the issue? In a way, I kind of wish that they would just take all of these like stupid leech effects and just push them to the side and go, Legacy, fuck off. Standard, enjoy them in standard. Anyone who's not a standard player, just get rid of the Vessel. I don't want to see more flasks like this. I don't want to see more flasks with 20% leech. I don't really want to see any flasks which have leech. But yeah. That was Taki Talks About Flasks. Uh, I am still doing the Slayer character. You know, the Slayer's still going perfect fine. I'm just mapping on it casually. Didn't want to do a build update because not enough has progressed since then. I'm just going to keep mapping on it. But yeah, I hope that was interesting to some of you. I would like to hear your ideas for flasks you would like to see. Which flask bases you think are underrated or overrated. And yeah, I'll catch you tomorrow with a update after some maps.